We also promised that we would talk about the five principles of breath therapy. This is an entire week of seminar on breath therapy, but I'm going to give you the quickie here. The first principle of breath therapy is the technique. There are thousands of breathing techniques, thousands of yogic breathing exercises, thousands of Taoist, Chinese, Qigong breathing exercises, exercises for all kinds of breathing exercises. Yeah? And so breath therapy starts with breathing technique, a breathing exercise, because the technique has power. If you have anything like normal physiology, you know, we have reflexes. Do, if you do something, you're going to get a reaction, right? And so if you are anywhere near normal, <laughs> when you change your breathing, you are going to change something. You're going to have a reaction in your system to that change in your breathing. So techniques are very powerful. And so we spend a lot of time working and honing and mastering different techniques for different purposes. You want balance, you breathe in a certain way. You want more energy, you breathe in another way. You want to become very calm, very still, very peaceful. You breathe in another way. And so we choose and we pick breathing exercises depending on what's needed in the moment. And we do further work of training our breathing mechanism so it responds perfectly by itself in times of stress, in times of anxiety, in times of pain, the breath will come to you and it will serve you. The second ingredient is the atmosphere in which you practice the technique. Now there are, there are powerful atmospheres, certain groups, things can occur in a certain community, in a certain spiritual group that couldn't occur. There's something powerful about group energy. And um, there are also powerful places, healing places on the planet. Sit by the ocean, sit in nature, sit by a waterfall. Places where ley lines connect in the earth. There were power centers on the earth and you don't even need a technique. You just sit in certain atmospheres in certain places and healing happens, growth happens, awakening happens. So the atmosphere is very important. The internal atmosphere, your psychological atmosphere, your emotional atmosphere, your consciousness, the atmosphere in which you live, right? The second ingredient, uh, second element um, in breath therapy. The third is the presence of the teacher, right? Water only rises to its own level. <laughs> uh, there is something about breath work that involves a transmission of energy, a transmission of skill, an initiation, uh, a transference of abilities. That's a real phenomenon. I was able to do things in the presence of my masters that I haven't been able to do on my own. Because of their presence, I had extra power. I had extra knowledge, information, abilities. There's something powerful about the presence of a teacher. And so it's our responsibility to be our own teacher and to seek out teachers that you can catch things from, like a virus. You can catch peace. You can catch joy. You can catch knowledge and skills and abilities by hanging out with people who have done a lot of work on themselves. So the third element uh, in this principle of breath therapy is the presence of the teacher. The fourth element is the mind of the breather. The mind of the breather is so powerful, it can neutralize the teacher. It can neutralize the technique. It can pollute an atmosphere or it can charge an atmosphere. The mind of the breather is a very important element in breath therapy. What do you dare to believe? What are you willing to experience? You know, what are you expecting? What are you determining to accomplish? What is your attitude? Really powerful principle. Consciousness of the breather, the mind of the breather. What do you believe is possible? And what is your intention? And how much intention can you bring to each breath? How much passion? How much enthusiasm? That's going to make a big difference in the results that you get from breath work. Then the fifth element is, I don't even know what to call it, and so I call it something else. It's a magical factor. It's a mystical factor. I like the, the concept of grace, the biblical concept of grace. You can't earn it. You can't deserve it. You can't seduce it. You can't buy it. You can't work your way towards it. It's given to you. It's some magical, some mystical factor. I don't know what it is, but I know it's working because you can do the technique wrong. You can do it in a terrible atmosphere. You can do it with a lousy teacher. You can do it for all the wrong reasons and still 
a miracle can happen. And that's why I know that something else is at work here. There's a wild card that's at work here. And I don't know what it is, so we just call it something else.